Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today I'll be doing a DNA reveal on my Tamascan dog. Alright, so for today's video I'm going to be DNA testing Kyoshi, who is a pure Tamascan, which are actually crossbreeds anyway. Um, however, it's really, really interesting because she's only two generations off one of the original foundation dogs called Magnus of Alba, and he came right from Finland to England. So he will give us an idea of the exact dogs and DNA that has gone into Magnus's background. Now, there are rumours circulating, obviously, that there has been some wolf blood in the Tamascan breed. And certainly when you go back on the family tree, there is evidence of Czechoslovakian wolf dogs in the history. And on the other side of the family tree, we have the same set of dogs which came over from America, which founded the Utenagans and the Northern Inuits. And there's a lot of speculation about what those dogs were, whether they carried any wolf blood, there might have been high content, there might not have been high content, nobody really knows. But the DNA test that I'm going to be doing today will truly tell you and me what exactly is in the Tamascan dog. Now, I don't really feel that she has a lot of characteristics of the Czechoslovakian wolf dog because I have a couple living with me already. I feel that she has more husky traits. She, um, she's incredibly predatory. But the one thing I did notice when she did turn up is that she has the same sort of coloration and markings as a Czechoslovakian wolf dog, even though you can see that she's a lot redder than they are. Also, she's less intense. Um, so in my opinion, if I'm going to hazard a guess before I actually get the results, I'm gonna guess that she's probably a watered down Czechoslovakian wolf dog, because if you go back on the family tree, it's evident that Czechoslovakian wolf dogs are there in the ancestry, but we will soon find out when I get my results through the post, just how much wolf blood is in the Tamascan, and I'm talking about my Tamascan. The Tamascan has gone on to go all over the world. There are breeders now in America, there are breeders in Canada, and everything has been watered down a lot more since those original foundation dogs. So whatever results I get for Kyoshi are probably going to be different to what you are going to get. Because she is so closely related to one of the original foundation dogs, it's a good chance that her percentage will be a lot higher than what yours might be. And the only way that you at home can find out how much wolf blood your Tamascan has is to, is to buy a DNA test yourself and go and find out. Okay, so to do this DNA test, I have sent off for an Embark DNA test kit. Now this is the only people in the whole world right now that are able to test European wolf content. So it's imperative if you are testing a dog that perhaps is a Czechoslovakian wolf dog or a Salus wolf dog or any dog on the continent that you believe has European wolf, then these are the only people that are going to be able to tell you if you have wolf content. If you go to one of the other suppliers that only stock North American grey wolf content, then if it flies flags up European wolf content, it will come back as, as unknown. So it's really important if you want to test for European wolves that you go to Embark. And um, of course, I've even spoken to people that have tested their Northern Inuits and found even a small percentage of wolf in that. So you can have a little bit of fun and see if your Northern Inuit carries any actual wolf blood. Okay, so this is the Embark test kit and um, I'm gonna now open it up and, and take a look inside and see what we've got. Right. Okay, what it what it says inside, it says number one, activate. In order to activate, you have to visit the website and updates on the results will be sent to your email address. So number two, you've got to swab. 
No eating for 30 minutes before collection. Well, Kyoshi hasn't eaten since this morning. Swab the lower cheek pouches to fully soak the sponge. Unscrew top and insert into tube, twist closed, shake tube back and forth 10 times. Refer to insert card for more detailed instructions. And then I presume you send it off, right. Swab the lower cheek pouches. So that's obviously in her lower jaw because that's where all the saliva is. So I'm gonna have a go. Okay. Oh look, there's a little, um, a little thing you can put on their collar there as well. That's quite cute. Okay, so inside the box, right, whoops, this is what we've got. So we've got, it's very sterile, so I, I, I'm guessing that we need to not touch anything other than our dog whilst we're doing this. Okay, so I'm going to get it out. Right, okay. Oh, I'm a bit scared. <laughs> I've got to do this on Kyoshi now. All right, okay, here we go. Kyoshi, right, come on, baby. And I'm gonna swab the inside of her bottom cheek, which I'm doing now, and you can see she's actually pretty relaxed. I'm gonna make sure I've got loads, because they said in it that you have to absolutely soak the tissue. Right, so it's completely soaked. And now I'm gonna put it into the solution which they have provided like they've told me, straight in, not touching anything else, screwed on, now I'm shaking it exactly how they've told me to do it. So that is done, that is completely finished and I've got a unique barcode for this one, so now I have to post it back to them and then I will get the results on the website. All right, so I've been told that it will take several weeks before I get the results for Kyoshi's DNA test. I'm really excited to find out, but it's important for me because it will help me understand her needs a little bit more um, when it comes back with wolf content or husky content and what percentage exactly she has will help me understand her character traits a little bit more. And of course, I'll be able to send the information to the Tamascan dog clubs out there so they can update their information. Well, hello everyone. I've got a very squiggly Tamascan next to me on the bed today. Well, we've got some exciting news. We have got Kiyoshi's Embark DNA results, which have come back in the post. Kiyoshi, I've got this, this really lovely Hawaiian cover on my bed because she's just been in the garden and she's covered in mud. So I've, I've had to put this beautiful Hawaiian cover on my bed to cover up my white bed whilst I tell you these fantastic results. Anyway, Going back a few months ago, I made a video on wolf content in the Tamascan. Now, as we know, a lot of the Tamascan base stock is related to Czechoslovakian wolf dogs, and there has been um, other rumours of other types of wolf dogs going further back in the ancestral tree. Now, Kyoshi is related to Magnus, who is her grandfather, who is one of the rootstock dogs that were brought back from Finland and going back on her family tree we did seem to come up with a couple of Czechoslovakian wolf dogs so when I was going to get these results through I was convinced that she was going to show some wolf content because as you know Czechoslovakian wolf dogs are 25 percent wolf well I'm in for a massive shock well this has been a huge shock because this has come back completely different to anything that I I ever expected. Um, she doesn't have wolf content at all, do you? If she does, it's so diluted, it's not there anymore. Um, she is 46.1% Siberian Husky, which I knew because all of the rootstock from Finland are Siberian Husky. She's 34.4% German Shepherd. Now that's a shock, because that's actually quite high. And um, if you go into the breed standard and you read about it, they're always talking about wolf-like dogs, but they always seem to concentrate on Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes. And they always say, with a little bit of German Shepherd. Well, to, to tell you the truth, 34.4% isn't a little bit of German Shepherd, it's actually quite a lot. And then 14.4% Alaskan Malamute. Now I've got an Alaskan Malamute called Valdez and he's massive. 
and he's really aloof and he's really independent and, and she carries none of those characteristics. So even if she's got a little bit of Alaska Malamute in her, she, she doesn't really show it in her character. Now this bit came as a real shock to me, the, the very last little dog that she has got in her, her ancestry. She's 5.1% Samoid. Oh, now I've had a Samoid and Samoids are so cute. They are so loving. They are one of the most gentlest Arctic breeds that there are out there. So Kiyoshi, you've got Samoid in you. <laughs> He's so sweet. So she's turned up being almost half Siberian Husky and then German Shepherd, then Alaska Malamute, and then Samoid. And it's coming up with no gray wolf. Now, Embark is renowned for having wolf DNA. They have European wolf DNA, they have um, grey wolf DNA from America. So if there's going to be wolf content, it is going to definitely show on this test. The other thing that it does show on Kiyoshi's Embark, which is this wolfiness tree that they put on here. Now, this wolfiness gauge is not supposed to apply to recent wolf uh, DNA. It's supposed to apply to ancient wolf DNA and she's coming up as quite high because um, a dog will come up as 1% wolfy or less. She's coming up as um, 2.5 wolfiness. So I'm going to put that down to the fact that a lot of her breed types in this are ancient breed types. I mean we know the Siberian Husky has been around for, for quite a few thousand years and also Alaskan Malamutes have been around for quite a few thousand years as well. And I think it's because these breeds are so ancient that, that the wolfiness is just more prevalent in the markers in, in, um, in those breeds in particular. So that's why she's come back as particularly wolfy. It could be the fact that they're tracing the Czech wolf dogs and maybe, you know, it's not recognised it as that, so it's always that could come up, but I would have expected Czechoslovakian Wolf Dog to have registered on here as grey wolf content. And the dilution that she's at is probably around 10% um, wolf. When I looked at her pedigree, I could have sworn that she would have been around 10% wolf, even 5% wolf, but none of that is showing up on here. So for my Tamascan, this particular one that I have here lying next to me, she is coming up as no wolf content whatsoever. However, that is not accurate across the board and we know that a lot of the base stock dogs have got some Czechoslovakian wolf dog in them and some other quantities. So the only thing that I can suggest for any of you out there that has a Tamascan wolf dog or a Tamascan dog, whatever you would like to call it, is to send off for an Embark DNA test kit and find out yourself what your dog has in it because all of our dogs are obviously going to be different. The Tamascan breed is so fresh, it's so new, it's just settling down into a pattern and a breed standard that still every single Tamascan is going to come up as slightly different. So you might send off for your Embark and it might come back and you might actually find that you have grey wolf content. Whereas Kiyoshi here, in fact, has none. And um, it's really quite surprising. I did actually think that I would find some, but there you go. So, um, oh yeah, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is really interesting, is when Embark does your breed analysis, it also goes into the health, and other things to do with your dog. So she was screened for all of these different diseases and conditions, which came up, it was really, really interesting because of course, when she was one years old, she was incredibly ill and she had um, ulcerative colitis, which is inflammatory bowel disease in dogs and she almost died. And um, nothing like that is registering on here. I don't know if they test for it, maybe they don't test for it, but she's coming up as completely healthy. So I'm going to presume that the condition she got when she was one could have been triggered by something. Now, sometimes conditions like that can be triggered by stress or bad diet. And I know she ate a pedigree dentist sticks and um, all of my dogs started having violent diarrhea at the same time after eating one of these pedigree dentist sticks, whereas she got very, very sick after it and they got better. So it could have been, that was a trigger for the inflammatory bowel disease. But when she was really, really ill, when she was one and we almost lost her, she went on a huge amount of steroids and I'm talking like two years worth of hard 
hardcore steroids that the vet gave us to save her life and she was weaned off them gradually. I made the decision to really try and wean her off as soon as possible because the vet said that one in particular, a yellow pill, could cause cancer and it's, it was ever so dangerous so to get her off it as soon as possible. So after getting her off it, she's been in remission now for um, eight, seven or eight years and she's been completely healthy as you can see. But one of the things they do on here is they also scan for age and um, her age came back as 20. She's nine. So when I read that, of course you can see why I was worried. I thought, oh my goodness, is she going to die? She really, you know, it, uh, was that disease so bad that it completely, completely destroyed her insides and, and is she actually clin clinically a 20 year old dog? But I spoke to a few people about that and they said that sometimes very, very strong medicines such as steroids and things like that can disrupt the DNA. So in fact, she probably isn't internally the age of a 20 year old, but the DNA structure has been damaged by all of the medicines that were put into her body and um, have broken the DNA a little bit. So even though she's registering as a 20 year old dog, um, hopefully she's not that old inside her body and that she still is a, a nine year old dog because she's so fit and healthy and wonderful and she tears around the garden. She certainly isn't walking around the garden like a 20 year old and I haven't had any illnesses off her. If you have had some exciting DNA results, I would love to hear from you whether it's a tomato going to check as a vacuum wolf dog or mixed breed. Um, it genuinely is exciting when we find out the background to our dog. So please write all your comments in the box below and we can have a chat about what you found. You might have had something really unexpected come up in the results. If you enjoyed this film then give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will join you next week with some more exciting films on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now!